we will be having, I'd like to um, open up with a, and it, we will see as time go on, is a very profound statement. And um, because of this statement that, we, that I will start our lesson with, I want you to give notice that as time go on, we, we're going to see the total development of what this statement was made. I like to go to St. Matthew's um, because it's, it's in one thing about this Bible, it tells the very thought of mankind upon the earth. But there's times that mankind and his thoughts become so savagery and so bitter towards the helpless population that he seeks a very uh, um, he seeks the ability not only to control but to eliminate. It says in St. Matthew's 24 verse 22 and except those days be, sh be shortened there should no flesh be saved. And this is a very very moving statement. This is St. Matthew's chapter 24 verse 22. Is that, and he says, no flesh except their time be short. And I like to start out with that and then come back to give verification of the truth of it because it is going to become very apparent when the people will get the understanding that there have been things that have been put into their food chain, there have been things that have been sprayed. <laughs> It, 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 it's, it's going to nerve the people to a self-panic of whether or not they will be a survival. You know, and, and, and our survival is not going to come through us appealing to them on a, on a humane basis because those that are in rulership are not humane. They're callous and, and they're w without... They, 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 they don't need a purpose. They just love being in control without being punished. See, because they are the people to punish, to administer punishment. So what they do is that they have done some very terrible things. So let, let us open up with this prayer and then return back and get more into it. Yahweh God, we thank you and pray that you will find us worthy to escape the, aunt, uh, the things that are coming that is so devious upon the earth. But we know, Yahweh God, our salvation is in you. And thou art merciful and kind God, and we pray. We pray that, Yahweh God, we might be found worthy to escape. That we might be found worthy as you have made us to keep the Torah, to learn the things in the land of our captivity. May Yahweh's name be ever praised, and we love our God with a perfect love. May the name of our God who is God, his name be we praise. Amen. Amen. So, I'd like to continue to bring total light of this control that man has been given that he is going to actually waste this planet. And we can think of whatever we want to think. 
But we're going to see these words that are written in this Torah come to pass. And there's many reasons why we're going to see it come to pass, but I like to get to, to explain to you. I like to go back to the book of Job. Because they, it, it is stated there's a time and season for all things. You know, uh, uh, and, and Yahweh God does things on the earth that, that he sees fit. And he gives rulership to whom he please. And when we look in the book of Job, um, Job chapter 9, I like, I like for us Job chapter 9. And I'm looking at Job chapter 9, 24. 24, could somebody read that for me? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Okay, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. It didn't say the world. It says the very physical makeup of this planet is being ruled by wicked people. And these wicked people have one thing that they want to do. They want to exterminate the people on this planet. This is a fact and it's going to become more apparent as time goes on. And if you don't have an alternative, then you're going to panic. Because there ain't nothing you can do. You might know about it. But we have to see what our God, what God is saying about this. Because this is some serious implications that not only has been made, but we're seeing the unfolding of this right before our eyes. So let us go <clears throat> and understand what is on the wicked man's mind. And let's go to Psalm 10. Because what gives him that authority to be so relaxed, to be that evil minded? Um, Psalm 10, I like to start at verse 4. The wicked, through the pride of his continence, will not seek after God. Allah is not in all his thoughts. So he is a loose cannon in the earth. He is a total loose cannon because he has no fear of God. Yeah, our God. In, 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 in Psalm 7, um, verse 11, Yahweh judges the righteous and Yahweh is angry with the wicked every day. Yes, he's angry with the wicked every day because the wicked put in place because he's the ruler of the earth. Things that is ungodly, unwholesome. There's no riches in his action towards the masses of people that he feels that because he has rulers, rulership of the earth, then he has the domain to dictate the outcome of the people that's on the earth. He doesn't see, he doesn't own the sun. He doesn't own the rain. He doesn't own these things. He wants to, he wants to manipulate to make him feel that he's in control. When we go to Psalm, back to Psalm 10, it says, Psalm 10, verse 5, it says, His ways are always grievous, thy judgments are far above, out of his sight, and for all his enemies he cuts it all at them. Yeah, see, it says here, his ways are ways of grievousness. So, being that you know the wicked man is in power, he's always going to present hardship. You understand? Let's go to Psalm 34. Third, no, 37, 14. And he says here, The wicked have drawn out his sword, 
and have bent their bows to cast down the poor and the needy, and to say and to slay such as are of upright conversation. So this is what he's putting in place. He, his purpose is to slay the poor and the needy. You understand what I'm saying? And how is he going to do it? Let's go back to um, Psalm 10. Psalm 10 will tell you exactly how he's doing it. Psalm 10, verse 8. He sitteth in the lurketh places of the village, in the secret places doeth the he murder the innocent. His eyes are privately set against the poor. Yeah, see, he's doing this privately, lurking, secretly. You understand what I'm saying? That's what he's doing. So he does these things. And how does he do these things? Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10 going to show you how he, he's doing it. <laughs> See, I, 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 I like for you to really understand that this man is not right. Isaiah 10, 10 verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that write grievousness which they have prescribed, to turn aside the needy from judgment, and to take away the right from the poor of my people. The widows may be their prey, and that they may rob the father. Yes, yeah, see, that's what they do. They inscribe in their laws. That these things will be all right to do. They mandate it and say in their laws that this is by the government and we can take this from you. Unrighteous decrees. That they will rob the poor that have no one to help them. As it says in the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, verse 11, it says here, verse 18, The wicked worketh a deceitful work. See, this is a deceitful work they work. A work that is ungodly, not wholesome, not enriched with righteousness. And why does he do this? Let's go to Psalm 52. See, when you understand, he he's motivated. 52 verse. Uh, um, 52 verse 7. 52 verse 7 says. No, this is the man that made not Yahweh his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthen himself in his wickedness. That's right. That's what he does. He says, Lo, this is the man that may not Allah my his strength, but trusteth in the abundance of his riches and strengthen himself in wickedness. See, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? This man is an all-out wicked man. And therefore, him being this, as it says in Psalm 18, verse 11, it says, The rich man's wealth is his strong city, and as a high wall in his own conceit. So his riches is his conceit, and, and he doesn't see anything other than his strength. Which is his riches. He doesn't count on God. When we go back to Psalm 49. Psalm 449. Starting at verse 6. It says to verse 7. They that trust in their wealth. And boost themselves. In the multitude of their riches. None of them. Can by any means. Redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. That's right. See, he said to them, he said, they boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, but 
He said, none of them by, can by any means redeem his brother nor give to Allah Haima a ransom for him. He said, he said, for the redemption of their souls is precious and it ceases forever. That's what it says. It says the ransom, they want to live forever. When we go down to that same chapter, verse 11, what it says. Their inward thoughts is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their land after their own names. Oh, have- see, so he says, this is their inner thoughts that they proclaim. And this is what they want. But what does it say at verse 16 of that same chapter? Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he live, he bless his soul. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. That's and, right. He and, shall go to the generation of his fathers and they shall never see light. Because they're wicked. They inscribe in the earth such pain and aggravation when God has not inscribed it for the people. They mandate it. There's a difference. And therefore, Yahweh God has told you exactly what they merit their whole campaign against the people of this earth, their own riches. And this is why in Proverbs, Proverbs 11, Proverbs 11, Proverbs 11, verse 4. Proverbs 11, verse 4. Profit not in the day of wrath. That's right. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. Why? No. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Riches profits not in the day of wrath. Okay. Proverbs 23. Verse starting at verse 5. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches suddenly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. That's right. It said that's what riches do. And to confirm it. Uh, um, Proverbs Proverbs 27, 24 say, For riches are not forever. Say, riches are not forever. One is obtained through ungodly means. Let's go to Psalm 73. Psalm, let's go to Psalm 73. To show you the circumstances that we will be engaged in on this earth. Psalm 73, uh, starting at verse 3 to, starting at verse 3. For I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain. Balance covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fakeness, with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lowly. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. That's right. Now go down to 12, that same chapter. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. That's right. That's right. 
Now go down to 16. When I thought I know this, I was too pain. It was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of Allah Then understood I therein. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terror? That's right there. Utter, this is going to happen. Because the time got to be short. Okay, let's go to Proverbs. Let's go back to Proverbs 6. I want to show you because I want to comfort you. Yes, they got this planet tied up. But you got to always go back to see what your how is about. See, you can tell what they're about, but you got to know what is in place for you. Because they ain't got no nothing for you. They want to see you six feet under. But see, we got to do some praying. We got to know what's on your Howard's mind because it ain't fair. And what ain't fair, you, this is why we read this book, to know. They ain't going to win this. They're not going to win this. But you got to know to have come. That's why I said, who shall arise to declare these things to their children so you don't lose balance and say, oh my God, look what's going to happen. Nah. Your Howard's in control. And he is going to confirm to you your strength is in trusting in his word. So it says in, Pro, in Proverbs 6 verse 15, Therefore shall this calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. When he's broken, there is going to be no remedy that's going to put him back together. Now let's go to Isaiah to prove this. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 447. Yeah, I was saying ain't going to be no remedy to put these people back together because they're too wicked. That's right. Um, starting at verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief, mischief, shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. And it says in verse 10, For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am and none else besides me. They, you understand what I'm saying? They ain't looking for nobody to rule over them, not even God. He says here, to show you the verification of truth, let's go to, to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation chapter 18 makes a statement, and we're going to start at verse 7. How much shall, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I said a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is Yahweh Allah who judges her. See, Yahweh said he's judging her. Now let's go back to Isaiah 47 and read to see the close statement that is made in the book of Revelation that is made in Isaiah. Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 7. Uh, Isaiah 47, verse 7. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither, the, neither didst remember the later end of it. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest care carelessly, 
they say it in thine heart, I am, and none else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection, for the multitude of thy sorrow, sorceries, and for the great abundance of thy enchantment. Yeah, see, he's using his wicked magic. And that's why if we go down to 12, he says, Stand now with thy enchantments and with the multitudes of thy sorcerers wherein thou labored from thy youth. If so be thou shalt be able to profit. If so be thou mayest prevail. Thou art weary in the multitudes of thy counsel. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. He says, since this is what you did from the beginning. When we go back to Revelation. Eighteen. Verse eight. Verse twenty-three. It says, and the light of her candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For the merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorcerers were all nations deceived. See, she labors in this stuff. She, she deals with the people very subtly with, with, with her enchantments. And therefore, Yahweh God is going to deliver these things that she has put her trust in. Yahweh God is a God that is said that he's going to deal with her because she has done very wickedly. And how is he going to deal with her? He says that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. And the circumstances that she has put into the earth we must want to know what is going to help us as a people. Because Yahweh God wants us to relax. Let's go to Psalm 37. I want you to relax. I want you to know that they going to get by. They ain't going to get away. Psalm 37, verse. verse 35. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Yahweh said, it's going to come. He says, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, though thou shalt diligently consider his place, it shall, it shall not be. And it shall not be. And that's Psalm 37, verse 35. And that's Psalm 37, verse 10. He said, yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place. And it shall not be. Because Yahweh God has told us. He says that he wants us. He says. But those that wait on Yahweh. They shall inherit the earth. And that's verse 9. Verse 11 say. But the meek shall inherit the earth. And shall delight themselves in abundance of peace. Because the wicked all he is is trouble. All he does is give trouble. You understand? Know and the thing about it is that Yahweh God has said in the same chapter, chapter of Psalm 37, I'm at verse <clears throat> 28. 
But the seed of the wicked shall, shall be cut off. For Yahweh love and judgment and forsake not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And see, you have to realize. And I'm down, same chapter, verse 38. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the transgression shall be, the transgression shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. So we are being thoroughly told that the wicked shall perish, but the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of Yahweh shall be as the fat of the land. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. And it goes up into that Psalm 20, and I'm at, I mean, Psalm 37 verse 20 Psalm the same Psalm of 37 I'm at verse 17 for the arms of the wicked shall be broken but Yahweh shall uphold the righteous so I want to give you a sure map and assurance that Yahweh is not going to let this go down the wicked's arm is going to be broken and Yahweh's going to deal with him. Because we can't. He's so entrenched into the earth and with